Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are delighted that you have joined us today and hope that you have a very meaningful worship experience. If you're with us for the first time today, we give you a special welcome. The red heart that was given to you signifies that we have opened our hearts and our doors to you. We hope that each one of you here today will join us again next week and also for our coffee fellowship and the New Life Center after the service today. Your presence is very important to us, so we hope that you will take the time to sign the friendship pad at the end of each pew and pass it to the person near you. This will allow us to have the names of everyone that is worshiping with us today. We're very happy to have our acolyte program in place under the leadership of Diane Schmidt. And we want to uh, thank Diane for that leadership and also thank Jasmine Reinhardt for serving as our acolyte this morning. We extend our condolences to the family of Miriam Rooney who passed away last Sunday. She was a long-standing member of our church and even though she was unable to be with us in, in recent times, she stayed connected with us by always asking about the church and keeping us on her prayer list. So we will certainly miss her. Everyone is invited to attend her service as we celebrate her life on Wednesday, April the 20th at 1 p.m. at Gables East Lobby at Southport Square. Just a reminder of our church night social, uh, it's coming this Wednesday night at 5 p.m. We are going to be serving hamburgers and hot dogs and all the toppings. And we do ask that you bring a covered dish or a dessert to serve from four to six people. And if you haven't RSVP'd yet, we ask that you do that tomorrow with Tanja and our church office so that we can be sure we have enough hamburgers and hot dogs for everyone. We are already looking for a wonderful night uh, of fellowship again together, so please join us. Reminder that the final men's breakfast of the year, year is coming up on Thursday, April 28th at 8 o'clock in the morning in McDonald Hall. As always, the final meeting, uh, men and women of the church are invited to attend, and we want to thank Don Phillips and Bob Hall for doing an outstanding job of of putting these together and also having informative speakers. We thank Don and Bob and Bob the Barber and all the other assistants uh, that have helped them throughout the year. Please join me now in our call to worship. Day by day, God leads us. Day by day, Jesus calls us. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us. Let us worship God. God is present to guide our journey and eager to forgive us when we go astray. Therefore, in humility and faith, let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Let us pray. Holy God, we confess we have strayed from your paths of right relationship and peace, and we have dishonored you, ourselves, and your creation. We repent of these hurtful ways. Forgive us, we pray as we learn to forgive others and guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Let's have a moment of silent prayer, personal confession. Hear the good news. God's mercy overflows as a healing spring to cleanse us of our offenses. Therefore, know that you are forgiven and receive new life in Christ. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The reading today is from Psalm 23rd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh God, our good and gracious shepherd, whose voice calls us each by name, who catches us and saves us with a surprising, irresistible gift of grace, we give you thanks for how we see your grace living and acting in our world and in our lives. How we know your loving spirit in the astonishing surprise and sunrise of wonder the wonder of winter growing into spring, the wonder of the potential of life growing into the fullness of life lived, the wonder of life lived leading us to the promise of life eternal, rooted and grounded in our Lord and life giver Jesus Christ. You call us to participate in the life you offer to the world, O oh God, and as partners in the kingdom. Teach us ways to be good stewards of this earth. Teach us ways to be more committed and act in deeper ways to take care of this creation. We pray for all the world in its beauty and brokenness that you would strengthen us and guide us. We pray that you open our hearts to respond to those who suffer for the victims of the earthquakes this week, for all those who have relatives of the folks in Ethiopia who died at the hands of senseless killers, give them peace. Let peace break out into the places of war, hope into the places of desolation, and life assert its dominion over death. We lift up to you our families and friends, those who are happy and those who know sadness or fear, those who are ill and those who care for them. Be with Miriam Rooney's family and friends as they grieve, while we also embrace the promise of eternal life, the gift you give us. Help us in the days of this coming week to show forth the wonder of your love and grace. For we pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Someone once asked me, what is this little prayer of illumination? And it kind of ties in, or maybe you won't notice it, but it kind of ties into the sermon. A prayer of illumination is that prayer that we take to God so that we're asking God through the Spirit to help us hear God speak to us. And so we pray this, hoping that somehow through the reading of this word, God comes to us and we understand what God is saying to us. So join me now in prayer. Shepherd of souls, you call us to an abundant feast at the table of your word. Open our hearts to feed on your goodness, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we might hear you, and we might dwell ever more deeply in you. Amen. 
Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of John in the 10th chapter, verses 22 to 30. Listen now to the word of God. At that time, the festival of dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Well, Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will not perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. All right, I hope you're awake. I'm getting there. Because we're going to start the sermon off with a pop quiz. And before you start sweating, as memories of childhood pop quizzes flood your mind, I'll let you all work together. And I think you'll know most of the answers. So are you ready? All right, here we go. You probably know the church, and not just our church, but the larger church has a calendar of its own, and it's complete with specific colors, like today is, that's the first one, it's right in front of you, today, thank you, today is white. It's called the liturgical calendar, and you may have noticed that these colors up here change, thanks to Brad and his good work. These are called pyramids, and I understand our congregation sewed these. Gail may have designed them, I think, and several folks helped sew these years ago. And we celebrate various days and periods of time throughout the year with our liturgical calendar, or the calendar of the church. And you know many of them, especially the big ones. So here's the second question of the pop quiz. So what do we celebrate at Christmas? I hear it. Birth of Jesus. Okay, that one was the very easiest, and I hardly heard it. Ash Wednesday. We all come together to start the season of? There we go. Palm Sunday. We remember and we worship Jesus as he enters into? There we go. Getting a little harder, maybe. Monday, Thursday. M-A-U-N-D-Y. Monday, Thursday. We come together remembering Last Supper and... Sometimes this year we did it, only we washed hands, but Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Good. Good Friday when we worship, we remember the crucifixion of? Okay, that one's to make sure you're awake. And Easter when we celebrate the resurrection. Oops, I gave it away. (laughs) Making sure I know this quiz of Christ. Okay, we'll give you five out of five for that. Now there's some that are a little bit more difficult. Christ the King Sunday, when is that? After Easter? Well, yeah, it's the Sunday before Advent. It's the last day of our liturgical calendar because our calendar begins with Advent. Epiphany, we celebrate the visiting of the Magi. Okay, it's getting a little harder. Pentecost, it's coming up in a couple weeks. The outpouring of the, oh, a little bit better, or the birthday of the church as the Holy Spirit came. So we'll celebrate that on May 15th here. Trinity Sunday. Who's the Trinity? The Father? Okay, you are awake. So those last couple, we weren't as good, but we're getting there all together, and we scored 100 on it. And last but not least, probably even less known, Who knows what today is? Sunday. There we go. (laughs) 
<laughs> there we go. Score one for Bob. And it's not, praise God, my taxes are done Sunday. <laughs> Today, many churches across the nation and even in the world are celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday. I'd never heard of that. Anybody know that? All right. We all missed just one. Well, now you know now. Now you know now. So many of us have Psalm 23 that, that Elaine read um, memorized, or at least we could keep up with it. And, oh yeah, I know that word, and I'm saying that along with, with her wherever we hear that. It's one of those scriptures we turn to for comfort as we cling to the promises of God, our God who will never, ever leave us, will be there in those tough times, will bring comfort and guide us through the valleys of death or those really dark times in our life and bring us peace. But how many of us have really seen a shepherd? Nobody. It is interesting to me just how much comfort we get as we imagine the shepherd of our lives. Running into sheep and shepherds was more likely an everyday occurrence in biblical times. So no wonder the metaphor of shepherd was used in the Bible. The people of that time understood the imagery. Sheep are mentioned in one way or another over 500 times in the Bible, often as a metaphor for God's people. And the shepherd is used around 50 times, depending on which translation you're using, and the shepherd being a metaphor referring to God or to the spiritual leaders of the church. But I'm not too sure how many of us have run into sheep, and it doesn't sound like many, or at least a shepherd in our modern times. And yet that metaphor has stayed strong and one of our favorites, one we cling to. I've often wondered what it might be like to be a shepherd or even a sheep. I've tried to imagine what that trusting relationship was like. So I want you to put on your English accent ears, because we're going to show a video, and I hope it will give us a glimpse of modern-day shepherding. What is it like to be a sheep, one who trusts and depends on the shepherd's voice? I'm a shepherd and uh, winter's cold but you never you never get up in the morning and think oh it's wet or cold today you're always you're thinking about your sheep you, you want your sheep to be fit because you're thinking about lambing so all through the winter it doesn't matter what the weather is I'm out every day and I'll feed my sheep and I'm miss a day if I could help it in lambing time I'm out no problem getting up I get up at half five every morning and I'm finished at eight o'clock at night and I never mourn about the hours. You know, I quite, it's, I quite like it, uh, you know, looking after my sheep, no problem at all. In, in lambing time, I'm doing about 120 miles every two and a half days. That's basically what I'm doing. And uh, I, I feel like I'm never off my quad. Uh, and the less I'm off it, the better, you know, if I, if I have to keep getting off to lamb sheep and whatnot. I'd rather everything was lambed when I got there and everything was all right. But you, you never have a good lambing time if you haven't had a, if you haven't looked after them. If it, there's an old saying: if you look after your sheep, your sheep will look after you, and it's true, you know. So they, they cost a lot of money to look after, but uh, it, it pays. Sometimes I can go up in the mist and I can't. It's absolute pea soup. Can't see a thing, and. I'll get to where I want to start feeding them and shout and they just they come from everywhere. It's, it's an amazing sight. They just 
you can hear them and they're coming and uh, they just they know you're there. Sometimes you know they hear the bike and, and they're coming uh, before you you have to shout. And if you you get to the end of where your sheep are and, you, and you, your neighbour's sheep come, if you whistle, they just part like the waves and your sheep run your way and his sheep run his way. In, in lambing time, uh, I go around my sheep uh, four times a day, every four hours basically, and uh, I'm just checking, making sure they're all alright. If I saw a sheep in mind anywhere that it shouldn't be, I would always get it back. I wouldn't leave it. Um, but they do wonder on occasions and they, they can be Houdini, you know, they, they, they go where they want to go and sometimes you, you really won't see them. I mean, I've had sheep that I haven't seen for six months that have been on the moor. Yeah, and I can tell that because in June when I get them off to shear, they've still got all the wool on at Christmas. You know, and we, nobody's got them. So you, you're not guaranteed to get all your sheep when you go up there, but mostly you get them. My sheep, they stay within a certain boundary on that 4,000 acres. And the reason they do that is when they're lambs, you send them up there with the mothers, and the mothers go to a certain area, and it might be only an acre on that 4,000 acres. And that lamb realises that that's where they live, and they will always go back to that area. So when you turn your sheep out onto the moor, so you've sheared them and you turn them out, it's an amazing sight because they just they, they go through the gate and they've like one track mind to get back to where they go, and they just all turn left and they go. They don't stop till they get there. It's just an amazing sight. Within a half an hour, you can't see a sheep. They're all gone. Twenty-one twenty-eight, twenty-one twenty-nine. Twenty-one twenty-eight, twenty-one twenty-nine. I haven't so many left, I don't think. I can't find many up there. But I don't want to wear my dog out. So. story about the Good Shepherd, I, I can identify with that straight away because Jesus, there's, n there's nothing you wouldn't do for your sheep. I've got a mower that I put sheep on and we'll, we'll get the sheep off every three months or so and uh, we go up and if a sheep drops into a valley and it can't get up, we'll go down and carry it out and, it, and we, you know it's no problem to us doing that, but if we have a guy that's working for us come to, he'll see it going to the bottom of the valley and, and he'll think, well, it's a lot of effort to carry that out, I won't bother. And Jesus is that shepherd. Nothing is too much effort for him. He would carry you right out of the bottom of the valley, he wouldn't leave you there. And, uh, so I, I understand that, the good shepherd, you know, really well. Uh, I wouldn't leave a sheep of mine if I saw it. I would always get it. While watching the video, the sheep know this English shepherd's voice. They know his bike, they know his whistle, they know and trust him. They have confidence and trust in him, and so they follow and even come running toward him. The shepherd picked these sheep 
and he knew what he was doing. These sheep belong to him and nobody else. They belong to him, and there's nothing he would, would not do for them. They are cared for. They are marked with paint to identify them, fed and carried out of the deep or deep dark valley when nobody else would or even could. The sheep know his caring ways and they know his voice. They have learned that they can depend on him as his work has testified that he was out looking for them, that he will not abandon them, and they respond by following. I want to follow our shepherd like that. In our text this morning, Jesus, our good shepherds, enter the scene in the cold of winter at the feast of dedication. Now, this isn't the pop quiz. I just, because I didn't even know what in the world that was on the Jewish calendar, and I would have failed that pop quiz. But the festival of dedication was and is that Jewish celebration, otherwise known as the Festival of Lights, or what we know now as Hanukkah, where they remembered God reclaiming Jerusalem specifically the temple, through the heroic faith of the Maccabees. And you might remember them. They were that ragtag group of Jewish rebels who fought to regain the temple way back in Jerusalem from the Greeks, Greek Seleucids, who had forced and in fact had outlawed the Jews from practicing their faith in about 150 B.C. Worshiping the Greek gods was mandatory in the very place that represented God's presence, in the temple where, God, where the Jews worshiped, believing that God resided there. So here enters Jesus, fully human and fully divine, God's presence in human form, and he stands on the porch of that temple, the very porch that had been the entry point to God's presence which is also a clear sign that God was now embodied among them and not just residing in the temple. And then the controversy begins. Who are you? And just give it to us straight this time. How many times do we ask God to speak clearly and help us understand? Just give it to us straight. Help us hear you plainly, God. And if you are anything like me, I ask God all the time in my prayer life, help me hear you. Help me understand in a way that I can understand. And what does God say to you and me? God says, you belong. You belong to me. Listen to my voice. You will know it. When you belong to my fold, you will see me, hear me, and know me as you participate in my flock. When you belong, you are actively part of my testimony, actively able to hear and see, actively able to follow. It's impossible when you're on the outside, not participating, not seeing, and not listening. This year I've been watching The Voice on TV. You know, it's that reality musical competition show. It's called The Voice because unlike other musical shows, the four judges begin with their chairs turned to the, and their backs are to the people who are competing. The judges pick who they want to have on their teams based on the contestant's voice and voice only not on their appearances or anything else. The show is based on the assumption that the contestant's voice communicates what they are about, and these celebrity judges make their choices based on that voice because they are trained to follow and choose the voice. Well, God has already chosen us to be on God's team otherwise known as a community of faith, to be God's flock. And as people who belong to God, people marked 
through our baptism, not with paint, but our baptism as our sign of belonging, we are called to listen as God speaks. And how does God speak to us? Sometimes mysteriously. We know it in our gut, in our hearts, and in our minds. God speaks to us through Scripture, as we just read, and the Spirit enables us to hear God. God speaks to us through one another. So what a responsibility we have, because God uses us to speak. And so, oh, how careful we have to be with our words. God speaks to us through one another's actions. So, oh, how careful we have to be with our actions, and not just with our words, but what we do. Because we testify to God's shepherding love. God speaks to us through our music and through just being together. As people of the flock, people who belong to God, we are called to listen and jump in and get involved. Not just get involved for involvement's sake, no, but to jump in because in community, we are able to discern God's voice. It is in community that we have the opportunity to hear the great shepherd's voice. It is the community of faith where we know we belong while participating in God's kingdom here on earth. And then we faithfully respond as we follow, living out our testimony to the oneness of God in word and deed. We are called to be shepherds for one another, Loving, nurturing, even going to those dark valleys with one another and not abandoning God or each other. Because God does not abandon us and God's voice calls us to care for each other and not leave anyone behind. So listen for the great shepherd because you belong to him and God is calling you. And go out and testify to the love of the Great Shepherd through your voice, through your actions, and through your shepherding of God's people. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again, from <clears throat> descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, it's hard to hear when we walk out that door. There's a lot of things that distract us, but I invite you as you go out from here to pause and try to listen for the shepherd who is calling you and then follow. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.